All right, I'm going to answer the great question of how to make coca van, or what some people would call chicken saute and red wine sauce, French style. And uh, let's, we're going to get right into it now. This is something that we're going to cook on top of the stove. And this is kind of a saute braising combination. Um, I have one four and a half pound chicken here. That's cut up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different pieces. The breasts are quartered and so on and so forth. And uh, we're going to start out. I'm going to get you started on this. It's going to take a little time to get this ready to start simmering and be braised. So we're going to season the chicken on both sides with salt and fresh pepper. Now, what does Cocovan mean? It means rooster with wine but the practice of using chicken seems to have taken over in France and so let's turn it over this way we can season it on the other side this way and anyway people use regular three four five six seven pound chickens to make this now and uh, this is a classic this is always made with red wine Let's get these floured and let's start sauteing these in the very pan that we're going to braise this entire thing in. Now this is traditionally floured. Doesn't mean you absolutely have to flour it, but this will help thicken the sauce a little bit that we're making at the same time that we're cooking and braising the chicken. We're making the stock and the ultimately the braising liquid that traditionally would be served with this. Okay, so I got a hot pan that I rendered this bacon in right here and this is part of the garnish that's going to go on the finished chicken dish because I'm making you two versions. I'm making you the home style provincial version and then I'm making you the, the little bit more refined slightly sexier version of the same Kokomon. Okay so let's start by getting these pieces sauteing so we have room to cook, uh, season the other ones. Turn these over in the flour. Now there's, I'll remind you that there's probably a hundred varieties of Cocovan, but one of the common denominators that they all have and probably should have is, first off, they're made with chicken or rooster. Second off, they're sautéed. Red wine is a primary part of the preparation, as well as mushrooms and bacon. Um, so, all right, let's get this in the pot. Otherwise, you'll be watching me do this video forever. Okay, let me wash my hands real quick. To, I have some more bacon fat here, and I have another hot pan ready to go here. I'm going to saute the celery, carrots, and onions and mirepoix. I have about three cups here. That's going to be part of the stewing process. More bacon fat, a couple of tablespoons. Mirepoix. And some thyme and bay leaf, dried. Now, when I say there's a lot of versions of this, I mean there's a lot of versions of this. You have some cooks that will marinate the chicken in straight red wine overnight. You have some cooks that will saute the chicken and then marinate it after it's sauteed but before it's braised. And what I'm giving you is a really good, common, traditional, conservative version of this very, very traditional dish. 
I would say this is probably the most recognized chicken dish in all of France. That would be for sure, I think. So, we're also going to add a little bit of brandy to this deglazing process. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to time elapse this video now a little bit. Let's give this stuff a few minutes to get browned and sauteed so you don't have to sit here and go through all that process. Okay, let's time elapse this and I'll shoot back in about five minutes and we'll pick up when this stuff is starting to get cooked. Then I'll take it to the next step before we start simmering it. Okay, the chicken is brown. This took about seven or eight minutes. Of course, the hotter your pan, the faster it takes, okay? So we're going to set that down. Now, I added, which I forgot to add right in front of you a few minutes ago, is I had some sliced mushroom scraps and things I had, which are now mixed into the mirepoix. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of cognac. And I'm doing it over here because I'm going to keep this away from the stove. There we go. Kind of burn that brandy off a little bit. Now, I'm going to take some of the red wine and we're going to pour it on the chicken. Now, there's all kinds of versions of chicken stock added to it now or brown beef stock, or a little bit of demi-glaze added to it, or water, all of the above work. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of brown demi-sauce. And of course we're going to... Uh, nah, 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 that's not enough. i got to put more butter. Let me get this mirepoix in here. And probably add maybe, probably total here, maybe a cup, cup and a quarter. Of some brown sauce and then I'll have add a little bit of this bacon to it taking the pieces that are have kind of like the most fat on them because it'll be rendering still in here and I'm going to bring this over here and take a look at this together before we set this on a simmer now So what we have here is mirepoix, and I forgot to put garlic in here, so I'm going to throw some in here right now. Probably should have cooked it a little bit, but it's alright, it's going to cook anyway. Let's put about three, two, two to three tablespoons of chopped garlic on there. Now how long should you cook this? First of all, you're going to cook it, you don't want to cook it any more than you have to cook it. Now that you've got a good look at this, I'm going to put this back on the stove. And I'm probably going to set this about a third of the way high. So it's, in this particular stove, I have a, a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to set this on about a 3. And, which I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to slow it down. And cover this up. I'm going to move this down to a one so its temperature comes down a little bit. I don't want to blast this with heat to get it cooked. We're in no hurry to do that. And probably 30 minutes, a little less, a little more, I'll be back and we'll bring that pot back out here and we will have some plates up here and we will strain that sauce for the fancier version that we're going to put on one plate and we're going to scoop directly from that container onto another plate, which would be the more of the country provincial version of this dish. Uh, and they're both absolutely delicious, and one is not better than the other, but I thought it would be worth showing you like kind of like two different ways to get it onto the plate, okay? So I'll be back in about a half an hour, and we'll finish this off. Okay, the chicken cocovan is cooked. It's... About to be finished on these two plates that I have sitting on the table in front of me. And we are going to walk you through that dish right now. The only thing I should tell you about is right at the end of that last take that we had when we were putting this on, 
I failed to throw the garlic in, so I threw it on while I was talking to you, but I never mentioned it to you. So I threw a couple of tablespoons of garlic onto this project here too, before it started cooking. Now, what we have here is cooked chicken. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of this pan. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the short version, the country version of how to serve this. This is not a crispy thing. You have the flavor of the brown chicken, but you don't have any crispiness of the saute, and you never do in this particular dish. But, you know, there's a lot of preferences. I will tell you that many times over the years when I'm working in restaurants as a chef, and I'm especially in the last 15 years, often when I serve this, I would get it to this point earlier in the day, and then I would take the skin off of it because I found that most customers wanted the skin off. We're not, maybe we'll do that with one of them today at these two, but uh, it's, it's an option for, you know, you're concerned about consuming fat you don't need, but you still want the flavor, which is in here. So cooking it with the skin is good. Of course, this particular type of dish renders a lot of fat that needs to be removed from the pan before it's served on the plate. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a, what I would call a quick makeshift version of the country style way of doing this, the home style, provincial style, whatever you want to call it. What we're going to do is we're going to tilt this saute pan and we're going to remove some of this fat before we spoon this food onto the plate. Now keep in mind that if you get any fat on the plate, you can always dab it up with a paper towel before you serve it. The other not so obvious solution to defatting this braising liquid is to strain it or not strain it and let it re get really cold and all the fat will congeal on the top and then you can take it off. We're going to take a shot at it now by putting the country version on the plate and I'll see if I can avoid some of the fat in this particular case. If I don't, I'll show you how to take the fat off the plate. Let's face it, this is chicken with bacon. You're going to have some fat, okay? So we'll take a little bit of thigh, and we'll take one of the wings, and one of the drummies, and a piece of the breast, and one of the, what I, one of the little mini drummies from the wing, and that, there's a dinner right there for sure. Then, I'm going to take, let's slide this over here. I'm going to take food from in here, trying to avoid big pieces of bay leaf. So we've got mushroom, celery, cut carrot, onion in here. Let's get rid of these bay leaves. That's why I didn't crumble these bay leaves up. This is not something you would normally serve because they're not, quote, edible with the dinner. So let's get a couple pieces of nice bacon in there, you see. And okay, let's see if we can get some of the sauce out of here without too much of the fat. Now that, let me put a little bit of tomato concasse on there which of course you know we have a lesson for. It's used in so many things in this course. And we'll sprinkle this with a little bit of chopped parsley. So this is kind of the simpler home style version of how to make this and certainly the quickest way, okay? So there's one version there. Now, let's switch the plates now. And let's strain this Let's get it on the stove with some different garnishes. I don't see any fat on that one over there that needs to be dabbed off, but let's let it sit for a few minutes. Maybe it'll show up. That gets dis discarded. Now, if you can get in on that, this has, still has a little bit of fat left on the top. 
You can put ice cubes in this. It'll bring all the fat right up to the top also. Or you can selectively remove the juice from it. Now what I have behind me here is kind of like a moderately hot saute pan, which I'm going to make a little bit hotter. And we're going to take some of the roasted white boiling onions that we have a lesson for and how to make. And I have some regular roasted shallots too here that were roasted with brown demi-glaze, etc. But these were meatless boiling onions here. So we're going to put a little bit of shallot and a little bit of onion in there. I'm going to put some nice pieces of bacon in here. And we're going to put some quartered nice sautéed mushroom caps in here. And now, I'm going to take some of this and we're going to bring this to a simmer and reduce that juice a little bit. You could of course take the time, which I'm not going to in this particular lesson, reduce all of this and before you divide it. Um, it would be something typically I would do in a commercial environment, but for practical purposes today I'm showing you the fast versions of how to do this. So let's cut away and let's let that reduce for about five minutes and during that time let's give you the skinless version by taking the skin off of this. Some people would say, oh man, he's throwing away all that good skin. And you're right, that's what I'm doing. This one didn't have much skin to begin with. I'd say you got a dinner right there. Keeping my hands washed on this deal. All right, so now... Remember one more thing about the <clears throat> Cocovan braising liquid. This does not have to be thick. It can be a little bit thinner than a regular sauce consistency, which is something that would coat a spoon or a plate fairly evenly. Uh, this dish is made in various ways. It can be a little thicker, or it can be a little bit thinner, and it's still a great Cocovan as long as you practice all of the other important principles uh, that are required to make this traditional dish. Okay. Okay, so let's put some of the other garnish on here. Again, I will remind you that one of these dishes isn't any better than the other, but this one that I'm putting together right now certainly is a little bit sexier, has some little more of a little more fun textures on it to eat. This one again, I will put a little bit of concasse on this one just for fun and some color. And I'll put a little bit of chopped parsley on this one just for fun. I mean, you can do all kinds of things. Like, I have some fresh cracked black peppercorn. If you like this kind of thing, you can put some cracked black peppercorn on it. Or whatever your fresh herb chop choice might be. Or a sprig of fresh rosemary or anything along those lines. So there you have... My versions that are fairly well guided by the long-term tradition of this particular dish called Cocovan, which comes out of the illustrious cooking country of France, which I love so much. And um, this is braised sautéed chicken. Enjoy it, and if you get a chance to make this for a special occasion or for any reason, do it. You'll really enjoy this.